Hi everyone, uh, thanks for checking out this video. Um, so in the last lesson we talked about the Gillespie algorithm and I sort of walked you guys through how to do it and also gave an example of uh, how it would be applied to a uh, model of a gene being transcribed into mRNA. And so in this video we're going to be actually um, coding this up in Python and then running the simulation. So before we get started with the code, I'll just show you guys, um, this is the, uh, sorry, this is, this is the ODE version of what we're going to be trying to do. But remember, we're not doing an ODE simulation because that, that's a, a deterministic simulation. We're doing a, a stochastic simulation, but this is the like ODE, um, like the ODE version of what we're going to be trying to do. So we have a, uh, we have some gene X and we're interested in the uh, the level of mRNA that's being transcribed from gene X. So we have K, which is the um, production rate, and then uh, gamma is our um, degradation term. Uh, but the whole the whole degradation uh, rate is uh, gamma times um, times the current level of X. Um, so that's kind of the uh, deterministic model. And then this is the uh, stochastic version of the same uh, the same system. So here we have um, two events that can happen. We have the, uh, the event where an mRNA is being created, which is X going to X plus one, and that's happening with rate K, so same as up here. And then we have the uh, event where an mRNA can be um, broken down, which is X going to X minus one, and the rate that that's happening at is um, gamma times X. So we have these two events and we know the rates for them and our goal is to uh, is to code this up into a um, stochastic simulation. Um, okay, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just um, just import some libraries we're gonna be using. So we're gonna be using NumPy, uh, matplotlib, and again, like I've been saying, I just need this line because for some reason um, with the new Mac OS, it's not working for me unless I include this line here. And then we're gonna be using uh, the random library for choosing random numbers. Okay, so um, so the, we're gonna start with, uh, so we're gonna start with, with defining some arrays to store, our, uh, to store our variables in. So we're gonna make a uh, x array and we're gonna make the first term in a zero and then a t array um, and start with zero. So what's going to happen is that we're going to be, every time the system gets updated with an event happening, we're going to append to these arrays. So every time X either increases or decreases, we're going to append a new number. So this will get, this will get filled up with numbers and wind up looking kind of like this. Sorry. Like this could be like the end result or something. So every time, every time we're getting x equals x plus one or x equals x minus one, this will be updated um, and the new value of x will be appended to it. And then we're also going to get um, every time the time point is updated, we're going to be appending to this uh, this array t here. So this could be uh, end up looking like I don't know something like or whatever. So I'm just, I mean, this is just an example, just uh, every time every time a new event is happening in our system, we're going to be just appending to these arrays with the new value of X and the new latest time point. Um, okay, so before we start with our actual simulation, we need to define the uh, simulation end time, T end. Uh, I'll make that 1000 for now. Um, and then we need our parameters. So remember we have uh, the production the production rate and then the uh, degradation rate. Well, remember the degradation rate is gamma, which is our degradation uh, term times whatever the current level of X is. So gamma will be um, a constant, but the actual level of X will be changing. Uh, so we're just gonna define gamma for now. So we'll have K be two, and we'll have gamma be uh, 0 0.1. So this will give us hopefully a steady state of um, 20, because remember the steady state for this for this system is uh, k over gamma, which we find just by by setting the um, derivative equal to zero and then solving for x. So hopefully if things work out, we should be getting a steady state of um, about 20 for this k over gamma. So uh, hopefully that'll work out okay. Um, okay, so now it's time to actually uh, run the simulation. So we're gonna be using a while loop to do this. So we're gonna say while t, 
So, so this here, when we have an array and we, we call the uh, negative one index, this is actually giving us the last element in the array. So remember, these are dynamic arrays with, with Python. I think they're actually, I think like Python actually calls them WISTs, but um, in general computer science, these are called uh, dynamic arrays. So we can uh, append terms to them. And um, so for now, all we have is a zero in there, but once we have a lot of different numbers, uh, this will be always returning um, the, the last number in the array. So that's what this uh, syntax is, the uh, minus one index. So this is saying, um, yeah, while while the last element of t is less than t end, so we want to we want to run our simulation while this is true, while the last element is still less than our end uh, our end time point. Um, and then we're going to say, okay, so this is all. So everything in this while loop is going to be the actual simulation. Um, so we're going to say the the current x. Um, is going to be, we're going to use the same syntax here, uh, x on the, uh, the minus one index. This will give us the uh, latest value of x, the last value in this uh, dynamic array here. Um, we're going to just temporarily store this in a uh, variable called current x. And then, uh, okay, so our, our rates. So we want to just, uh, like I said in the last video, we just want to get our rates organized in uh, in just a temporary array here to just keep track of them. So the rates are gonna be um, K and then uh, gamma times current X. So this is where I'm getting these from here. So, and the reason, again, the reason we're doing the current X is because this, the X here is itself dynamic. So this is changing. Um, so, so K and gamma are constants, but the actual level of X is changing. But the rate of this actually depends on uh, the current value of x. Um, okay, so those are our rates. Uh, we're going to make another um, another temporary uh, temporary variable called rate uh, rate sum, which is just the sum of the the rates. So we're going to be using that. Okay, so next we need to uh, choose the time point of the next uh, event. So remember, it's like I said in the last video. So the way we do the Gillespie algorithm is we uh, we at, at some time t we choose a value tau where t plus tau will be the time point of the next event that's happening. So we choose that randomly, and then we choose randomly which event that will be, and we just loop that, continue doing that until we get to the end of the uh, simulation. So the the first thing we're choosing is the uh, time point of the next uh, the next event. So it's like I said in the last video, um, this is a random draw. We're taking this number tau, which will be added to the current uh, time point, and tau will be a random draw from a uh, exponential distribution. So we're using the NumPy random exponential distribution here, and then we're gonna say scale equals um, one over rate sum. Okay, so a bit of explanation of this syntax here. So something to just remember and keep in mind is that when we're passing in the, this scale parameter here, so the scale parameter is um, one over the lambda term for the uh, exponential PDF. So if you guys remember the, the PDF for the exponential distribution is uh, lambda times e to the negative lambda x, which might be a good thing if you guys have time to memorize it. But instead of passing in lambda for the scale function, the, the scale, I mean, yet yeah, this, sorry, the scale parameter here, it doesn't take the value of lambda, it takes one over lambda. Yeah, so if we want lambda to be, uh, to be the sum of all of our rates, which is what we said in the last video, that's what we're, that's what we're gonna be doing. Um, if we want lambda to be the sum of all the rates, we need to actually set scale to be one over rate sum because this is one over lambda. And another way to think of this is that for the exponential distribution, um, the mean, the mean of it is one over lambda. So this scale parameter here is actually also just taking the mean we want for, uh, for the uh, exponential distribution. Um, okay. So then once we have tau, so we're going to say uh, t append, um, t to the minus one plus tau. 
So it's like we said, so for each, for each event that's happening, we're appending the uh, time point to this array here. So we're gonna say whatever, whatever the current T is, remember this is the last value in the T array that we have so far. We're going to append um, that value plus whatever tau we just picked randomly. So we're gonna be appending the, the, new, um, the new time point in that way. Okay, so then after we choose the time point of the next, uh, the next event, we need to choose actually which event that will be and what will be happening. So the way we're gonna do that is by choosing a random number, which we'll call, uh, just call, um, we'll just call rand. And then, so this will be um, just a uniform random number. Um, yeah, between zero and one. So this is the uniform distribution between zero and one. We just want some, some decimal that will be between uh, zero and one. It's, there'll be a random draw. And then we're gonna say, um, okay. So I'm just gonna type this out and I'll explain to you guys what's happening. Uh, so. Okay, so you guys might need to kind of wrap your head around how we're doing this, but remember, so the way we're picking which event will happen, it's just a random draw with um, each of these uh, probabilities. Basically, each of the rates is turned into a probability. So each, like the probability of this happening um, is K over the sum of the rates. And the probability of this event happening is uh, gamma times X over the sum of the rates. So basically just we're, it's a random draw where we're weighting these events uh, with their proper weights. Um, so what's happening here is that we're picking a random decimal between zero and one, and we're multiplying that by the sum of all the rates. And then we need to check where this product falls. So if the, so if the product of the random number and the uh, rate sum is greater than zero, but less than, uh, less than k then that means we're going to be choosing um we're going to be choosing this event okay and then likewise um we're going to do the same thing to check if uh if the uh, other event is happening so for this one we're going to say um sorry i'm just going to type this out and then i'll explain to you guys oh whoops Okay, so this first one, this first if statement is saying that if uh, if the product of our random decimal times the rate sum is greater than zero and less than k, because remember the, the first element of uh, of the rates array is k. Um, so if this product is greater than zero and less than k, then um, then that means that the first event is happening. Uh, that means that x is going to uh, x plus one because some, uh, some mRNA is being produced. And then likewise, um, for the second if statement, we're checking the alternative, which is that um, if, the, if the product is greater than K, um, but less than, uh, less than the sum of K plus uh, gamma times X. So if it's, if it's basically between K, yes, if it's between K and uh, the sum of k plus uh, gamma times x, then we're choosing um, we're choosing this event here. And I realized since we only have two events, I could have just made this an else and not even written this line. It could just be check this if, if statement and then else. But I'm writing it in this way because when we start to add more events, it'll make sense to have it written this way because then for each one we can just check if it's between um, if it's between. Uh, like the, the cumulative sum of, uh, of rates up until some point and the cumulative sum of the rates up until the next, um, the rate of the next event. So it might not make sense now, but when we start to do, uh, in the next video, when we do more um, events, um, it's gonna make sense to write like this. 
But anyway, so you guys may need to like wrap your brain around this a little bit because I know I did when I was doing this for the first time. Um, but yeah, so this is how we choose. Uh, we choose. This is how we make the weighted probabilities to make this random draw to choose which event is happening. But yeah, so if we choose, if we choose, um, actually add comments to make this more clear. So if the production event ends up happening, then X is updated um, to be whatever, uh, actually we could have just, you know, I guess we could have just called this current X here, but uh, that's okay. But yeah, so X will just be updated to be the last value of X, whatever that was, um, plus one, if an mRNA is being produced. And uh, if the uh, decay event is happening, then X will be updated to be whatever the last value of X was, minus one. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, so that's actually it. So um, this will run until uh, until the value of T um exceeds uh, or at least reaches or exceeds uh, our end value of t of a thousand and then by the end of this we'll have x and t all filled up um, with the time point of each event and then the level of x uh, when that event occurs um, okay so hopefully this works let's uh, plot the results and see what it looks like um. Okay, before I run it, let me just make sure. Okay. Yeah, hopefully it works. Yeah, so um, it appears to have worked okay. So I know it looks weird, but remember, since this is a uh, stochastic simulation, it actually is okay to kind of look weird because... Uh, yeah, I mean the randomness is actually what we're what we're interested in. Um, so if you guys can see, it's it's hard to tell here, but it actually is. It, it's hard to tell with this one with this trajectory. But if we do this a bunch of times and sort of average them out, and you guys can try this um, on your own if you want, but uh, if we do it a bunch of times, it will it will be apparent that twenty is the steady state here. Um, if we if we just ran this uh, simulation like yeah, like a hundred times or a thousand times or whatever, and then averaged it out, it would it would show that 20 is uh, the steady state. But since it's, I mean, yeah, since it's a, a stochastic model, the steady state is like not really that steady because it is, it is fluctuating around the steady state. Um, and like I usually tell you guys, I think it's a good idea to kind of like play around with the parameters, uh, try out different things, try, it, try running it for um, a longer time, try maybe a shorter time. Uh, yeah, different parameters and stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's it for this video. And in the next video, we're going to try a uh, stochastic model of a uh, more complex system. So thanks for watching. See you next time.